This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi, comedy, and romance film called The Map of Tiny Perfect Things. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. Mark Wakes up just as his mother leaves for work. During breakfast, he greets his dad and sister, Emma. Mark echoes everything that they say, casually acts at the perfect time with what happens in the kitchen, and even helps his father with the crossword puzzle. Afterward, he rides around the neighborhood, Knowing exactly when things will happen, he stops someone from texting while driving and tells a stranger that his missing keys are in his bag. He then hitches a ride on the back of a pickup truck and helps a young woman with directions without asking her before chilling at the library. After a couple of construction workers leave for lunch, Mark takes their bulldozer for a ride and announces that he won the lottery at a diner. By the afternoon, he chills by the community pool, then spots Phoebe. The girl he helped with directions earlier. Mark saves her from falling into the pool, and the two bond. Later, he walks Phoebe home, but she refuses when he invites her to hang out later in the evening. Mark then visits his friend Henry, who's playing a video game. After Henry's character dies and respawns, Mark wonders what life would be like if they get to respawn and repeat life. Mark fantasizes about using the time loop ability for good, but Henry only thinks of using it to get girls. Mark insists that getting girls is not as easy thinking of the many ways that he failed in getting Phoebe's attention. Henry agrees that infinite possibilities come with infinite ways to fail, and in that case, he'd be stuck in the loop forever. Mark, however, questions if he'd want to get out of the loop since he'd be the center of the universe. Henry argues that it would get boring and repetitive. Mark waits for midnight that evening, and the time loops back to the same day. He spends the morning the same as yesterday, but also practices playing the tuba and drawing before heading to the community pool to try his luck with Phoebe again. However, when he's about to save Phoebe, another girl catches the beach ball that's supposed to hit her instead. When Mark visits Henry, he recounts about the blonde girl, confused about who she is and where she came from. The girl dropped a flyer for a missing dog when she left the community pool. However, when Mark called the number, the man on the other end only had an eight-year-old daughter instead. Mark attempted to find her several times, but to no avail. One day, Mark spots someone leaving a $100 tip at a diner. Curious, he follows the person, believing that it's the blonde girl. He finally catches the blonde girl, Margaret. While she's leaving the diner and confirms that she's also stuck in the time loop, Mark is relieved to learn that someone else was also experiencing the time loop. He asks what she's been doing during the time loop, and she admits that she's been trying to teach herself how to drive. Mark claims that he's trying to save the world in any way, and Margaret advises that he shouldn't set his goals too high. Margaret tries to leave, but Mark gets her attention by showing her how a dog accidentally steals another man's phone. He shows her other humorous coincidences, which amuses her. However, Margaret's phone rings, and she announces that she has to leave. Mark asks for her number, saying that they should keep in touch, since they're the only ones aware of the anomaly. Over the next few loops, Mark finds more things to look forward to. He continuously changes his hairstyle and sends Margaret the pictures, but she doesn't respond. Finally, Mark asks her to meet up. The next day, Mark and Margaret swap stories about their personal life and experiences with the time loop. He asks what's the craziest thing that she's done during the time loops, and in response, Margaret shows him how she drives. During the drive, Margaret shares that she wants to be an aerospace engineer at NASA. Margaret then plays the CD in the car, then comments how awful her friend's taste in music is, revealing that she stole the car. Margaret then parks the car near the woods and takes Mark to the lake. There, they watch a bird swoop down and catch a fish. Margaret recounts that she saw it at first while looking for the missing dog, though she admits that it's pointless to search for the dog again. Her phone then rings, so Margaret takes Mark home. After dropping him off, she picks up the phone quickly and assures someone named Jared that she'll be there soon. At home, Mark draws Sisyphus, inspired by his and Margaret's earlier conversation. He leaps off the roof before midnight, then lands on his bed after the day repeats. The next day, he takes Margaret to watch a group of skaters. A younger girl joins in, and after the skaters ridicule her, she does the trick that they've been failing at, much to everyone's surprise. While letting her drive a road roller, Mark asks about Jared. Margaret reveals that Jared is a 21-year-old med student but says nothing more. They then share their theories about their situation. Mark wonders if the time loop is about appreciating all the perfect, random moments like seeing the bird catch the fish. Margaret, however, is skeptical. She prepares to leave when Mark challenges her to find all the perfect, random things that happened in their town on that day. Margaret doesn't share his enthusiasm since she simply wants to get through the day. Mark insists that they can make their situation mean something, which convinces Margaret to stay. While leaving money randomly at a store, Margaret wonders about the fourth dimension and concludes that they're mere shadows of fourth dimensional people. She believes they could see everything in the fourth dimension, though it's unreachable. The two start plotting how they could find the perfect things in the town and decide to just look for them and list them down. 
Over the next few loops, Mark and Margaret go around town and find small moments, such as traffic getting stopped by a turtle crossing the road, an elderly couple playing chess, and a pair of wings from a van positioning itself perfectly behind a man. Margaret also finds a three-leaf clover and a construction worker playing the piano beautifully. One day, Margaret corners Mark into studying algebra, insisting that she can't hang out with someone who doesn't understand logarithmic functions. After studying, they watch a perfect cloud formation. Margaret ignores her ringing phone for a while and admits that she sometimes wishes the time loop never ends. Margaret then leaves, but Mark insists that she can skip meeting Jared for just one day. Margaret, however, doesn't listen and leaves. At home, Mark's dad joins him in the living room to talk about his future. Mark jokes that he wants to be a priest or join the Space Force. Mark shows his dad a dragon tattoo on his stomach just before time repeats. The next day, Mark searches for Jared on the internet. Later, he shares his feelings for Margaret with Henry, but adds that he's disappointed that she always leaves him after 6pm. Henry advises Mark to take her somewhere to convince her that they genuinely have a connection. One day, Mark takes Margaret to a school gym where he set up a mock space station and moon. The two then spend the day pretending to be astronauts. Mark attempts to confess his feelings to Margaret, but hesitates. Instead, he invites her to ride his bike around the school, pretending to head back to Earth. They go to Mark's house and wonder about how they always wake up at the same time every morning, as if something puts them to bed. While looking at their family photos, Mark shares that his mother works late at night, so he barely sees her. While his dad recently quit his job to write a book about the Civil War, he then asks about Margaret's parents, but she dodges the question. After watching a movie, Mark leaves to go to the bathroom. During this, Margaret finds the map he's made of the perfect things. Mark is embarrassed and reveals that he redraws the map every morning, but Margaret is amused by it, encouraging him to go to art school. Mark admits that he's been trying to see a pattern, hoping to unveil something. Mark then leans in to kiss her, but Margaret refuses and gets ready to leave. Mark argues that she could tell him what's happening with her and Jared, but Margaret adamantly refuses. She explains that she doesn't want to mess anything up, since they're already stuck in time. She concludes that they should just be friends, and Mark has no choice but to accept it. Heartbroken, Mark waits for midnight at the rooftop. He immediately wakes up the next day, and for the first time, he asks his dad about his mother. His dad simply answers that she's fine. Mark then opens up about Margaret to Henry, who's confused about his friend's situation. Frustrated, Mark rants how he hoped, after repeating every day, he'd finally get it right. The next day, Mark tries to avoid his dad at home, but fails. His father corners him about the future again, but Mark argues that he has no future, since he's stuck in time. He then shoots back at his father for denying his dreams about art school, while he was able to quit his job to write a book. After Mark begs her to stop playing the violin, Emma asks him about his talk with their father, and he admits that he yelled at him for quitting his job. However, Emma reveals that their father was fired because the company didn't need him anymore. Their father didn't want to admit it, because he's ashamed, while their mother is angry about it, but can't express herself since it wasn't his fault. Their father isn't against Mark going to art school, but they just can't afford it. Before leaving, Mark asks about the soccer game, and Emma shares that her team lost. Later, he approaches an algebra professor at school, and asks what could cause the temporal anomaly. Mark lists down some theories, and crosses out those the professor thinks aren't possible. In the end, the professor agrees that a singularity could theoretically cause the time to repeat. They can escape the loop if they escape the singularity. One day, Mark and Margaret are finally tired of searching for the perfect things in town. Mark is also tired of finding meaning to the time loop, but Margaret suggests that there are still crazier things that they can do. Mark yells for her to stop making light of things, and Margaret argues that he's just angry because she won't kiss him. To make him feel better, Margaret takes him to a show house. They spend the day thrashing the place to forget about their problems. Afterward, Margaret admits that she thought that the world was broken, even before the time loop. Mark then shares his theory that they can escape if they get far enough away from the town. But Margaret isn't in a hurry to leave. She compares escaping the time loop to growing old and regretting everything that they wish they could have done. Mark argues that what they have now isn't exactly living, and the other people are also stuck with them, never accomplishing anything. Feeling guilty, Margaret hesitantly agrees to his plan to leave. The next day, the two head to an airport and board a plane to Tokyo. Mark figures that since they're crossing the international dateline, they'll finally reach tomorrow. He's hopeful that it'll be like saving the world if they succeed. He puts on an eye mask to relax, but when he removes it, Margaret has left the plane, and he's too late to chase after her. Mark spends time alone in the plane, drawing the small, perfect moments he and Margaret witnessed. Among his drawings is Margaret in a spacesuit. Finally, the plane reaches the international dateline, and when it does, Mark wakes up in his bedroom again. He joins his family for breakfast, but is surprised that Emma didn't insult him like she always does. Mark then asks his dad about the book that he's writing, and his father enthusiastically talks about the Civil War. Later, Mark finally joins his dad as they watch Emma's soccer game. 
This time, Emma's team wins. Later, Mark casually slips the winning lottery ticket to a woman in the diner and uses the bulldozer to rescue a cat. He joins the elderly couple playing chess and applauds the construction worker for playing the piano. Mark also does well in school and practices music with Emma in the afternoon. Afterward, he joins the skaters but fails in his landing and breaks his wrist. At the hospital, he spots Margaret so he follows her. Margaret enters a patient's room and Mark discovers that her mother is terminally ill. Jared is a medical student looking after her mother. The next day, he hurries outside to catch his mother and hug her. Then, he plays the video game with Henry while confessing about the time loop, which Henry doesn't take seriously. He then talks about Margaret and how he feels like he found the fourth dimension when they met. Mark has felt like there's more to his life because of Margaret. However, he realizes that their story isn't a love story, and he isn't the hero. Their story is simply about Margaret. Meanwhile, Margaret struggles throughout the day, waking up alone in her house while thinking of her dying mother. Later, she tells her mother about how she messed up her relationship with Mark, but her mother encourages her that it's not too late for her. After visiting her mother, Margaret sits at the bench where the truck with the wings stops by. She then offers the seat to the man who always sits there. Suddenly, a dog catches her attention, and she recognizes it as the missing dog that she was looking for before meeting Mark. Margaret contemplates returning the dog to its owners, but instead visits Henry. While she helps him complete the video game, Margaret recounts meeting Mark during the temporal anomaly. She decided against returning the dog since it'll be missing again tomorrow. Margaret then shows Henry how she used a special weapon in the game, thus completing the stage. Margaret suddenly talks about how death, both in life and in a game, is terrible, but not facing losing someone would just end up in losing oneself. Henry then proceeds with the game and unlocks a map, giving Margaret an epiphany. She hurries out, leaving the dog to Henry. She then recreates the list of perfect things and drives around town, witnessing them all as they happen. However, Margaret feels like something is missing. She recreates the map and the moments into a three-dimensional model with strings, then sees its shadow, create a four-dimensional cube on her wall with one part missing. Upon calculating the time and area, she deduces that something will happen at 7 p.m. at the community pool. The next day, Margaret visits her mother early in the morning, she cries, believing that if she finds the last perfect moment, the time loop will end and she will lose her mother. Her mother encourages her to embrace life as it is. They will always lose time, but they gain more to experience new moments. She insists that in the end, everything will be worth it. Near 7 p.m., Margaret finds Mark at the community pool. She joins him and explains that he was right all along. The perfect moment created a pattern, but there was a missing moment, and that's the key to ending the loop. Mark then admits that he saw her in the hospital and assures her that he won't take her away from her mother. Margaret recounts that the night before the time loop, she was told that it was her mother's last day. All she thought that night was how she was not ready to face a future without her mother. So she wished that time would stop. Somehow, it worked. Margaret was happy that the time loop happened, but she was confused that Mark was also stuck in the loop. Now she realizes that he's there so that when she faces the future, she won't be alone. She concludes that they've been the ones who were sleeping, and she has decided to wake up. Margaret then pulls Mark for a kiss, creating the final, perfect moment. That night, Margaret visits her mother for the last time and says goodbye. By midnight, she and Mark step out of the hospital, anxious about what will happen. They see Mark's watch reach past midnight, and it suddenly rains, signaling that the time loop has finally ended. And in the morning, they finally return the dog to its owner. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.